Good morning, Samaria. Oh, y'all sound excited this morning, and I am excited as well. I'm overjoyed and excited to see all of you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to worship, whether you are here on the premises or whether you are joining us via Facebook Live. We do appreciate you joining us by whatever means or methods are available to you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And I pray that something is said or done that is indeed a blessing to you on the day and that your time spent is not spent in vain, but that the Lord would bless you mightily as a result of your participation in our worship today. If you are worshiping with us for the very first time in this format, we do want to make you aware you can access the sound for our service through your radio stations. That is FM station 105.1. Is that right? Yeah. I don't have my cheat sheet in front of me. Uh, 105.1, you can access the sound through your radio systems. Uh, if you need to access the restrooms, the restrooms are available inside the building, but you do need to access them from up here on the pavilion. We would ask if you need to enter the building that you please wear your mask, Please practice social distancing and please make sure you're washing your hands so we can continue to protect, protect one another. Amen. Amen. Also, during the time of offertory for today, the ushers will be serving us. We are glad that the weather has cleared up a little bit so that we can be gathered and not have it raining and thundering and lightning on top of us. So the ushers. Amen, amen. So the ushers will be coming to your vehicles today to collect your gifts, tithes, and offerings. Uh, please be mindful that we are still working towards our Annie Armstrong offering goal of $3,000. So please uh, be mindful of what the Lord would have you contribute to our Annie Armstrong offering. That is our primary means of supporting our North American missionaries uh, here in the United States. We do want to do our part to contribute to the work that they're doing on our behalf. So again, be mindful of that. And then finally, uh, during the time of invitation, uh, if you need to make a decision for the Lord or need any type of spiritual counseling or need to communicate with the church in any fashion, uh, please do not leave these premises without notifying somebody. If you're joining us via Facebook Live, uh, please shoot us an email. Uh, if you're here on the premises, just wave your hand outside of your vehicle and someone will come to your vehicle to collect the necessary information for the church to follow up with you. But please, if you need to make any type of decision for the Lord on today, please let somebody know so we can do our due diligence and follow up with you to make sure that you are being well discipled in your Christian spiritual journey. Amen. Uh, I think I covered everything. Uh, I don't have my cheat sheet in front of me. I do want to have a word of prayer. Let us look to the Lord for a word of prayer. Father God, blessed and holy, we thank you again for another opportunity to gather to gather together as your people, to worship you in the manner in which you desire, spirit and in truth. Father, we pray that this time together is already blessed, that you have manifest your presence in a special and unique way through the songs of Zion that we have sang and, and listened to, through the prayers of faith that are being prayed and are uh, or will be prayed. And even as your gospel is preached, Father, we pray that you might have your way on this day, Father. Speak a word to us, uh, help us, uh, empower us, equip us to be the saints that you have called us to be. And we thank you in advance for these things that you do in our midst even now. And we ask all of these blessings and prayers in the precious and the powerful name of Jesus. Come on, honk if you love Jesus. Amen, 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 and hallelujah. We now have a special announcement or a special presentation from Sister Sonya. Amen. Good morning, and um, happy Palm Sunday, everyone. My thing. My thing. Palm Sunday is the Christian holiday that occurs on the Sunday before Easter. This celebration commemorates Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, which is mentioned in the four Gospels. Jesus entered the city knowing he would be tried and crucified and welcomed his fate to rise from the grave and save us from sin. Palm Sunday marks the beginning of Holy Week, the remembrance of Jesus' last days to the cross. Palm Sunday is observed by the blessing and sharing of palm branches placed in front of Christ as he entered into Jerusalem. Let us praise God for sending his son to earth, the sacrifice Jesus made for our sins and our eternal life through Christ in Christ through faith. May the spirit of this holy occasion, may the warmth of the season, and may the beauty of springtime make your heart bloom and joy and happiness. 
So now if everyone is able and you have one, let's raise our palm leaves outside our windows and praise for Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 All right. I just wanted to let everyone know, um, Ms. Brenda just sent me a message on Facebook and she said we have actually surpassed our goal for the Annie Armstrong offering, so let's keep going and God is good. Good morning, church family and friends of Samaria. So good to see you. All right, well... Since it's already been mentioned twice, I'm going to go ahead and mention it as well. Our Annie Armstrong goal was $3,000. As of last Sunday, we did surpass that, and we're at $4,293. So praise the Lord for that. And, and, and if the Lord is leading you, you, you can still give to it this week and next. Anyway, God bless you, and happy... Uh, Happy Palm Sunday, everyone. So glad you're here today. Uh, Before you get into your heavy stuff, can I? Make yes, one? sir. Um, <clears throat> I did something a little different this week. If you look on the website, on the internet, um, you'll see a, a bulletin in the members only section. Uh, it relates to a picture the pastor sent me and a letter that we've gotten. The Jurgens family that's sitting out there, I believe, this morning. Blow your horn there, family. They're here. I saw them pulling. They're down that white pickup truck. Um, <laughs> There's a picture of them. They've requested membership in the church, and, and we've sent for their letter. Um, it's a little different time, day and time, but uh, I'll put it in the website in the form of a bulletin that shows up on the members-only site, so maybe you'll see it there. Okay. Um, so welcome them, drive by, wave at them, whatever. Amen. Thank you. I also would encourage you, if you're able to, to just kind of drive through the... Uh, foyer out in front and look inside. Uh, uh, Miss Wilma put, uh, put a cross there and it's lilies. And anyway, she just made a really beautiful display, but it's inside. Uh, so you'll have to look through the glass, but uh, it's, it'll be worth your effort, I promise. Okay, uh, I wanna go with the uh, COVID information. Uh, it, we have in the United States, 30 million 21,282 cases, and we have had 545,467 deaths. Uh, in the state of Virginia, uh, we have 613,974, 10,178 deaths. In Charles City, we have 441 cases, and in New Kent, we have 1,374 cases. So anyway, keep praying, keep doing what you know you need to do. And uh, anyway, thank you. And uh, I didn't really plan on saying anything, but circumstances in the world just wouldn't leave me be, or the Holy Spirit wouldn't, and so I'm gonna share a couple of things. And today is indeed, Palm Sunday, uh, the, tra the traditional day that Jesus rode triumphantly into the city of Jerusalem as the crowds of people shouted, Hosanna, which is a Hebrew word meaning save now, save now, which is exactly what Jesus rode into Jerusalem to do, but not in the way that the people were expecting him to do. They thought he was coming to deliver them from Roman oppression, but he came rather to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to set us free from our sins and to show us the way to real life here on earth and eternal life in heaven because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by him. Sadly, most of the people that day missed what Jesus came to do. Sadder still, in my opinion, is that so many today 
miss it as well. Friends, let's not you and me miss what God is saying to us in these volatile days of hatred, cruelty, and death that we're living in. Uh, God has us here at this time to fulfill his purposes. And when we seek his purposes, he works all things together for good to them who love him, to them who are called according to his purposes. Several weeks ago, I preached to you from Matthew 25, where Jesus said, I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in, naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. And then he goes on to say, and as much as you have done it unto the least of these, you have done it unto me. Yesterday in my studies, uh, I read where Andrew Blackwood Jr. wrote, Jesus, why didn't you tell me you were hungry? Why didn't you tell me you were thirsty? Why didn't you tell me those were your toes sticking through cracked shoes? Jesus, I didn't know you needed Medicare. Why didn't you tell me they had sent you to jail? I want to open the door and invite you in. Please tell me who you are the next time you knock. Well, friends, make no mistake about it. Jesus is always knocking, and he has told us very plainly who he is, hasn't he? Whenever we do it, unto the least of these, we do it unto him. In that same pas passage, Jesus goes on to say, to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the self-righteous, for I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. Or when I was a stranger in need of clothing, sick or in prison, you would not help me. And they asked him, when did that happen? And he answered, when you did not do it unto the least of these. Now folks, when God called me to preach, he called me to preach his word and to give him glory, which to the best of my ability, I've always tried to do. I've never wanted to or had any desire to stand on a soapbox and uh, talk about politics, but there is so much misinformation today out there, or to be more precise, there is so much lying taking place that it's vital that's God, that God's people and God's preacher proclaim his truth. This past week, in an effort to keep poor people from voting, uh, the state of Georgia made it a crime to give someone a drink of water if they're standing in line to vote. And what happened there uh, is trying to happen throughout this nation by certain parties. God gives to all people a consciousness, and we all know the difference between right and wrong. Folks, all this hatred, all this meanness, lying, and, 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 and now with more mass killings, it's just got to stop within, it's got to stop within our nation. Especially if we call ourselves followers of Jesus. You cannot say that Jesus is Lord if you're not willing to do the right thing or to speak up when wrong is being done. As his people, all that we do, we must do in faith. What you and I do as God's people should have nothing to do 
with whether or not we're a Republican or a Democrat, nothing to do with who's on the right and who's on the left, and nothing to do with who's red or who's blue, and as far as I can tell, with my eyes, none of you are those colors. Uh, the, cho the choices of what we do as his people comes down to a very simple decision. Are we going to do what's right and pleasing to him, or are we going to do what's wrong and suit ourselves? Jesus said, truly, I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because he belongs to me will never lose his reward. When we see wrong being done as his people, we cannot stand by and say or do nothing. Go home and read. Matthew 25, 31 through 46, and if you do, I believe you will be compelled to make your voice heard and your actions speak for the sake of Christ and his kingdom. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and the small, still voice of the Lord spoke to me and said, tell this story to the people I send you to. The Lord did this so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, and that because you believe, you might have life through his name. My name is Darius, son of Thomas. I am an Ethiopian emissary of the Candace serving on behalf of my queen in the court of Pontius Pilate in the Roman providence of Judea. I was in the crowd that day, the day Jesus of Nazareth came into Jerusalem riding on a young donkey. The day the crowd of people threw palm leaves at his feet and shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, King of Israel. The people were shouting this. Meanwhile, I had just been contacted by one of High Priest uh, Caiaphas' associates, notifying me that they were planning to have Lazarus killed because so many Jews were starting to believe in Jesus because of Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the grave. Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, let me back up some and fill you in on some more backstory that led up to today's events. It all started at that wedding in Cana. I didn't know who Jesus was at the time, and I suppose hardly anyone did except for maybe John the Baptist. However, when he changed the water to wine, he was the talk of the province, to say the least. And then, right after that, he comes into Jerusalem and he throws out the money changers from the temple courtyard. Now these money changers, these were my people that he had thrown out. Now they don't work directly for me, but these are the people with whom I have regular interaction and, and complex business dealings. His actions certainly have ruffled some feathers and they have also slightly impacted my, my personal business dealings. But he heads on back to Galilee and life moves on, so I thought. But no sooner than things could get back to normal, we get reports of him talking to some woman in Samaria. What is a Jew doing in Samaria anyway? I always thought it was a bit ridiculous for the Jews to walk all the way around Samaria, but that is what they normally did. So this report certainly took me by surprise. But more and more people are starting to believe because of all of the testimonies of these various peoples. And then there was another sign. There was this Roman official whose son got sick. This official, he was one of Pilate's top guys serving in the region. And Jesus heals his son by only saying a few words. Now this really started a buzz of going around the palace courts. First water to wine, and now this. And then came another sign, but neither was this sign without controversy. 
The very next time that Jesus came into Jerusalem, he heals a guy who had been lame for 38 years. But the issue was he does it on the Sabbath day. Even I know how serious the Jews take their Sabbath observance. But Jesus didn't seem to care about appearances, nor the fragile egos of the religious leaders in the city. And after this, some of them, they wanted to kill Jesus. Now, the, the Jewish religious council called the Sanhedrin, they had great influence within the city. Their leader was the high priest Caiaphas. And there was another very influential member of the council whose name was Nicodemus. Nicodemus was the one who had inquired of Jesus by night because he had seen the signs that Jesus had been doing. Now, I didn't have any close dealings with either of these gentlemen, but they both would have an audience with Governor Pilate on occasion. Like when John the Baptist was preaching just outside the city and baptizing people for repentance and causing so many to travel out there to see him that Pilate had to confront Caiaphas about it. Caiaphas said that his counsel had nothing to do with the wild man preaching out in the wilderness. But it was Nicodemus who had seemed to smooth things over with the Roman officials. That was before all of this Jesus stuff had really started to kick off. Jesus, he just continued with the signs and wonders when he feeds the crowd of 5,000, or when he walks across the Sea of Galilee, or he heals the man that was blind from birth. He's also teaching in the synagogue. All while these other Jewish religious leaders, they are actively trying to find ways to trick him or trip him up, and ultimately trying to stone him on several occasions. The Pharisees, they would conduct interviews and collect evidence and try to discredit Jesus. But Jesus declares that I am. And all of this goes to a, a, a new level when Jesus raises Lazarus from the grave. Some of the religious leaders, they, 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 they call these religious leaders called Pharisees and the high priest Caiaphas with his minions on the Sanhedrin council, by this point, they are so angry and so frustrated with Jesus that they, 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 they decide that he's a heretic and that he has to be killed. This was the advice to Caiaphas that he had shared with his father-in-law, uh, 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 Ananias, who would later interview Jesus before he would come before Pilate. So these friends of Jesus, Jesus' friends Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus, they live just outside the city. And Lazarus, he gets sick and dies. And he's been dead for four days when Jesus finally shows up. Now many of the Jews, they were there with Mary and Martha uh, for support in the death of their brother. But this group, they followed along when Jesus asked where the body was laying. So for the sake of the crowd, Jesus performs this miracle sign for all to see so that some would believe that those who believed might have life. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. This act of raising Lazarus from the grave, it caused many to believe. And everyone who was there, they were telling anyone who would listen what had happened. But some of the Jews who were there, they went and told the Pharisees what Jesus had done. The chief priests, Caiaphas, and all of his, his Pharisee minions, they called a meeting of the council and they said, what are we to do? This man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him and the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. It was then that Caiaphas would say, you know nothing at all. You do not understand that it is better for you to have one man die for the people than to have the whole nation destroyed. So from that day on, they planned to put him to death. Now Jesus, he, 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 he was aware of the intentions of these men. So he no longer walked about openly among the Jews. But he went from there to a town called Ephraim. It's in the region near the wilderness where John was preaching. And he remained there with his disciples. But the Jewish observance of the Passover was near. And many of them went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Now these people, they were also looking for Jesus because they did not know if he would come back to Jerusalem. They were asking one another as they stood in the temple, what do you think? They were asking one another as they stood in the temple, uh, 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 surely he will not come to the festival, will he? The chief priests and the Pharisees, they had given orders to anyone that knew where Jesus was that they should let them know so that they might arrest him. Six days before the Passover, 
Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they had given a dinner, or they gave a dinner for Jesus, where Mary would anoint Jesus' feet with the expensive perfume. So there was this great crowd that had gathered, a great crowd of Jews, and they had learned, when they had learned that Jesus was there, they came not only because Jesus was there, but also to see Lazarus, because uh, on the account that he had been raised from the dead, uh, there were many Jews who were deserting and, and, and believing in Jesus because of the signs and wonders that he had done. The next day, that same great crowd that had come to town for the festival, they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem again. So they took these branches of palm trees and they went out to meet him. They were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, an exclamation that is used to express adoration and praise and great joy. They also shouted, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. The people shouted this and it infuriated Caiaphas and his circle of Pharisees and religious leaders. This Jewish infighting, it was a big issue for Pilate. Pilate's wife, Claudia, just so happened to be best friends with my concubine, Lydia. Lydia informs me that, that Pilate is reluctant to intervene in these Jewish affairs, but the escalating encounters every Jewish festival day, it was now an ongoing, unresolved, and repeated issue that needed to be dealt with. Many of you are likely familiar with the events that will go on and transpire during the course of this coming week. Monday, Thursday, where Jesus washes his disciples' feet. Good Friday, where Jesus will be hanged on a cross. And Easter Sunday morning, when Jesus will defeat death in the grave and rise with all power in his hand. But in between now and then, it is that the Lord, this is what the Lord desires that you know. The Lord says that I am. He says, I am the bread of life. So if any of you are hungry, turn to Jesus and see if he gives you life. He says, I am the light of the world. So if any of you are walking in darkness, turn to Jesus and see if he brings you into the light. He says, I am the gate for the sheep. So if any of you are lost in the world, winding around dealing with the dangers of the world, would it not bring you great joy and pleasure to be led into the gate of protection? Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. How would you feel if Jesus led you to the still water and the green pastures? Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Would you believe if you had been there the day he called Lazarus forth from the grave? Indeed, he is the resurrection. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I encourage you, look around about you. I am certain that there is someone nearby who can speak the truth, that Jesus is indeed the way. Many amongst you have walked in this way for many, many years. And I am here to declare to you today that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you believe, if you know the truth, if you accept the truth, then you also can have this life. Jesus declares that I am. If he is indeed I am, and you believe, then that is the reason he has sent me here today, to declare to you that you can have that life that he declares for all of us. The word of Jesus Christ for the people of Jesus Christ is that I indeed am, and that you believe can have life. So our word of invitation for today is that if you have never accepted this Jesus, this Messiah, this Savior of the world, then the Lord has sent me to present you with an opportunity to say aloud and in public, just like he stood before the grave and conducted his sign and his miracle for all the crowd to see, I declare to you that it is important for you to stand before all of the world and allow them to see that you declare that I believe Jesus is the way, the Savior of the world. He died for your sin and for mine, and he has risen from the grave that we might have the right to life, life eternal. I know that this is only Palm Sunday, and we must experience the trials and the tragedies of Passion Week. And he doesn't rise from the grave until a week from today on Sunday morning. But in the meantime, do you know that he is? I am. Do you know that he came that you might believe? Do you know that he died that you might have right to eternal life? Hallelujah. I believe that there are many witnesses among us that can de declare and testify to the truth that Jesus is indeed the I am 
that he is indeed the, the, the one who works signs and wonders. He is the one who indeed desires that you believe and that you might have the right to life, life eternal. If that is your desire, if that is your will, if that is your hope to have that life eternal, I invite you to come now. Stick your hand out of your window, wave at those who are wandering through the parking lot. Give your life over to the Lord that you might be saved, that you might know him for the truth, the reality that he is indeed the Messiah, the Savior of the world, who died for the sins of the world, that you might have life and life eternal. That is the message of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. On this Palm Sunday, the Song of Invitation declares, Hosanna, Hosanna, Lord God in the highest. We give you praise and honor and glory even now. If you need to make a decision for the Lord, do it even now as our Song of Invitation plays. God bless you all. Well, between Darius and the Holy Spirit, I think you got you got the word today. Amen. Okay, I want to thank Darius for that because uh, we don't we don't usually go that for him every too often, but it was nice to see. I appreciate it. And uh, I want to call uh, Brother Darren Holmes to come and dismiss us today. And God bless you. Thank you so much for your presence here, and for those watching on uh, Facebook or. Uh, or YouTube. Amen. God bless you. Let us pray. Hosanna, we need you. Hosanna, we praise you. We thank you for this day, one that we've never seen before and one we've never seen again. I pray this message that was brought our Reverend Darius will uh, pierce our hearts. I pray that it's met our every need. I pray it's given us a sense of awareness of what this week is about and it, what it means to us as children of God. I pray that we reflect all that Jesus went through this week um, in preparation for for that Friday hanging up on the cross for the sins of all of us under the sound of my voice. Just the pain, the struggle that he went through for his children that he loved immensely. I pray too that we do the same, that we may go through some pain, we may go through some suffering, for our brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that barriers will be torn down, walls will be torn down. Um, hatred um, will be cast into the pits of hell. I just pray that if it's there one today that doesn't know you, Lord, that you'll shake them up, quicken their spirit, dear God they may come to know the saving knowledge of your amazing grace. I pray if there's one of us today, dear Lord, that if has fallen upon the wayside, I pray that you re redirect their paths and guide us, dear God, that we may come back in accordance to thy will. I pray if it's one today that think we're okay, but in your eyes we're really not you'll pierce our hearts again as well and put us on that right track again dear God again I thank you for every opportunity that you allow us to assemble in your presence I thank you for the, the shepherds that you've sent our way dear God to, to proclaim your name and I thank you for all the, the members who are so faithfully each and every week Father whether they're here on the premises, whether they're watching through Facebook or whether they watch on YouTube. Bless their homes and their families, dear God. Guide them and keep them if it's thy will. And I just pray, Father God, that, that everything that was said today and done is in accordance with your will. 
pray for traveling grace on for each one as they travel to their various homes. And I pray that that each day we take some time out and reflect the days and the hours that are leading up to Good Friday. And I pray that we all assemble here next week for that joyous resurrection day, dear God. As we're going to talk about that empty tomb, dear God. And that's something that we cling to. That we rejoice about the empty tomb. We just love you, Father. We praise you, Father. We need you, Father. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle.